Exhausted from a long hunt, an Australian sea lion hurtles through the shallows towards shore. Having had her fill of squid, cryptic fish and small crustaceans, she must now haul out, rest and feed her pup. It's a daily routine. Her pup will rely on her milk for 18 months before it's ready to feed on her own, one of the longest offspring bonds in the animal world. This is Lilliput Island, part of the Noitz Archipelago on the west coast of South Australia, one of a handful of vitally important Australian sea lion colonies remaining. In a single trip, sea lions from these sheltered waters will travel about 50 kilometres from home to find food. For this colony, the foraging ground is relatively nearby. Her neighbours at Blefusco Island, only five kilometres away, travel three times further to the edge of the continental shelf for a meal. And it's not just her fellow sea lions that are interested in her return. A small group of dedicated scientists, in partnership with National Geographic's Criticam Technology, have been studying this colony for several years. They want to know the intimate details of their lives and why, mysteriously, their numbers continue to decline. And what they've discovered is astonishing. Armed with this newfound knowledge, a line has been drawn in the sand and the race is now on to reverse the legacy of the seal trade that once decimated their numbers. Here in the protected shallows of Baird Bay, about 100 kilometres west of the Lilliput colony, Australian sea lions frolic with eager divers. Away from the dangers of the open sea, the sea lion's natural curiosity towards swimmers makes this an unforgettable tourist experience. But it wasn't so long ago, the relationship between sea lion and man was very different. Records from the era are scant, but we know the arrival of European sealers in South Australia was devastating. Although hunting was banned in the early 1920s, and sea lions given protected species status in the 1970s, their population hasn't recovered. With less than 12,000 sea lions remaining in the wild, these unique animals have been listed as endangered by the IUCN since 2008. Professor Simon Goldsworthy is one of the foremost experts on Australian sea lions, and regularly leads expeditions to survey, tag and track sea lions in the wild. South Australia is really important for Australian sea lions. Over 80%, around 83 to 85% of the species is restricted to South Australia. We surveyed across 42 known breeding sites. And, and what we found essentially is that the, there's far fewer Australian sea lions here than we thought, and that we've had almost a 25% decline in the last uh, 10 years. He and his team have been working to fast track research into why the Australian sea lion population hasn't recovered, including microchipping pups at the Seal Bay breeding colony. And this enables us to, to monitor the survival and reproductive success of these individuals throughout their entire lifetime, simply just by walking up with a, a long uh, armed scanner and waving over the, 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 the rear end of the animal and um, being able to read that microchip. And so we've been able to learn a lot of very important information, just like on you know, how long do animals live, when did they begin to reproduce, so adult females, uh, how often do they, do they give birth, um, and how successful are they at raising pups through to weaning, what age do the males uh, start holding uh, breeding territories or mate guarding females, and how long they live. So we're finding a lot of key information about the, the population demography um, of the species that is just impossible elsewhere. Australian sea lions are experts in making the most of limited resources allowing many small, independent colonies to exist across their range. The key to this strategy is individual specialisation. Each animal doing something slightly different to another, a slightly different foraging strategy in a different habitat, targeting different prey. The end result reduces competition between individual sea lions and makes limited resources go further. This individual specialisation is so profound that it leads to unprecedented genetic separation between neighbouring colonies including differences in the timing of breeding seasons, even though separated by just a few kilometres. Female sea lions live their entire lives in the same place, despite being capable of swimming great distances. Their intricate knowledge and familiarity with their foraging habitat, and how to find suitable prey within it, is key to their survival. 
Australian sea lions are slow to reproduce, investing up to 18 months of maternal care in a single pup. This, scientists believe, is an adaptation to the relatively resource-poor environment they call home, and goes some way to explaining why their bond to their home territory is so strong. They can't just get up and move their breeding site somewhere else. It has to be just right for them in terms of enabling them to access food throughout that entire lactation period, which could last you know, 18 months or more. What, what we realise now is that, that at a very, very young age, these animals pretty much adopt a foraging strategy and then they stick with it. Females, that is, particularly females, will do this. And that will serve them pretty much for the rest of their life. When we look at a range of colonies within, say, uh, somewhere like the Noitz Archipelago off Sojourna, where we've got eight breeding sites within a 40 kilometre radius of each other. So we've got many colonies that are only kilometres apart, really. And we've found profound differences in the feeding behaviour of individuals from one island relative to the adjacent island. So, for example, Lilliput and Blafuscu Islands off the Franklins, they're only five kilometres apart, yet Yet most of the females breeding at Lilliput Island all feed, most of them feed in inshore shallow waters, averaging only 11 metres in depth. And they're feeding around the coastal areas in, in very shallow waters in amongst seagrass beds and, and shallow rocky reefs. Um, whereas most of the, the females on Blafuscu Island are heading to the mid to outer shelf waters. They're heading 70, 80 kilometres away um, feeding in 70 to 80 to 90 metres of water, down to 100 metres of water. And so they're travelling more than, more than two or three times the distance and diving, you know, um, uh, four, five times, six, sevenfold the depths of the, of the inshore females. This highly specialised habitual feeding behaviour and its close connection with the sea lion's home territory is thought to stretch back for many generations. For Professor Goldsworthy, it's a sign of a highly complex and evolved interrelationship between these animals and the place they call home. It's having a map in your head. That's what these animals have. When we've, when we've uh, deployed the critter cams um, on the sea lions, they know exactly where they are. They know every rock, every crevice, every patch of seagrass, every little patch of rocky reef, um, every patch of sand. They know where they are all the time. And um, you know, we've, we've got you know, hours of critter cam footage where you see an animal f traveling across the, the, the seabed, across this barren, sandy bottom that's fairly featureless. And they're, they're traveling in a straight line. And after, after minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes, you'll see out of the gloom, one rock appear, you know, and they've just been heading all to that rock the entire time. And they know exactly where it is. And then they'll spend some time checking out there to see whether there's anything that they can eat. And then they're off to the next feature, you know. So it's a bit like us going, you know, walking out of our house, going to the post office, and then onto the supermarket, and then onto the bottle shop, or whatever, you know. They know exactly where all the key points and features that are important in their lives are in this marine environment. You put them in a completely alien environment and they probably will struggle. Although these specialisations have allowed Australian sea lions to survive in challenging, resource-poor conditions, they also reduce the capacity of colonies to recover from human impacts. Across the state, a range of management measures have been implemented that will hopefully enable sea lion populations to recover. To reduce the impact of accidental capture in fishing nets, gillnet fishing closures have been introduced all around Australian sea lion colonies off South Australia. All gillnet fishing vessels are now fitted with video cameras to monitor sea lion interactions, and bycatch trigger limits have been introduced across seven zones that limit the number of sea lions permitted to be killed each year. If these limits are reached, that zone is closed to further fishing for an 18-month period, the time it takes for a new pup to be raised. State and Commonwealth governments are working together too through the marine parks that protect both coastal waters and the open ocean. Together, these networks of reserves protect a range of animals and wildlife. But for the Australian sea lion, no reserve is more important 
than Seal Bay. When visitors come to Seal Bay, you're essentially, um, you're, you're walking into the sea lion's bedroom, really. They, that's, they're returning to shore from foraging trips and they're there essentially to rest and to sleep. And um, and also all their social interactions occur there. The, that main beach at Seal Bay is, is not, a, not a breeding beach as such. The, the breeding tends to happen just to the sides of that beach and into the adjacent bays either side. Um, so the animals that are actually present on that beach where visitors uh, can undertake a guided tour, the animals are there on their own accord and um, so it's it's fantastic that, you know, essentially uh, despite I guess the, 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 the presence and of people there almost every day of the year, um, these animals are quite happy to, 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 to share it with people. Here, access to this important breeding colony is controlled within Seal Bay Conservation Park and Southern Kangaroo Island Marine Park. Not even scuba divers or swimmers are allowed to enter the Marine Park Restricted Access Zone. Further out to sea, the adjoining Murray Commonwealth Marine Reserve provides some additional protection to the ocean environment and the animals that call it home. While conservation of the breeding colony is the highest priority for Seal Bay, the carefully managed tourist areas of the park allow for an unforgettable meeting with these remarkable animals in their natural habitat. So we can actually walk right up to where a sea lion is and observe them because um, they feel quite safe with that barrier and we've just got um, you know, certain practices with how we approach and the guides here can read their behaviour very well so we know when they are getting frightened and if they do then we step back and everything like that. And also when we're on the beach too, um, if a pup comes up to us, you know, we keep our feet still and sometimes they get really curious, they'll come up and smell your shoes. It's one of the state's most important conservation initiatives in action. It's also one of the few places where tourists can walk amongst the sea lions on the beach and see them basking after a long day's hunt or feeding their pups. With this suite of protections now in place, researchers hope to see an increase in the number of sea lion pups over the next decade. Until then, places like Seal Bay are the best way to see Australian sea lions in the wild, protected in their natural habitat.